we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, who does give us all things, we ask for your blessings upon your family and upon all people who call upon you in faith. Help us to be thankful for all the things that you provide for us, and especially for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray, amen. Would you please be seated? This is Thanksgiving Sunday, 2019. It's like a time when you can pull back from all the things in this life that cause you worry and pain and headaches, all of the demands. But do we actually accomplish that? Do we actually feel that the weight has been lifted off our shoulders? Well, as much as we think that it's possible, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Because it seems that we let other things get in the way. We let other things take control of our life when we can share them with God. What we really want to do is to be in God's house to worship together, to hear about God's love and concern for us, and to listen to God when he says, I will lift the weight from you so that you can walk around with your head lifted high and you can see things that maybe you have missed before. That you can enjoy the company of your family and your friends and you can give thanks to God for all of our blessings. You know what it's really about at Thanksgiving? It's about the ways in which God treats us because really what we are is not just a bunch of individuals we are a family we are together we confess the same thing we listen to God we obey him and we're happy about what God has given to us But there's another side to it, and that's how the family responds to God. In our culture, families love one another. They simply do that. But how does it start? Is it only when they do what we want them to do? Is it, I can love my family, yeah, when I feel like it. Well, we could do things like that. But you know what? God says to us, love your family. Love other people every day. We don't need a reason. We simply love them. Because that's the way that God treats us. We can use gifts. We can use words. We can use gestures to thank people. When it should be, we can thank people every way that we have. So don't set boundaries on the way that you can thank other people. Simply do it. Wipe away the boundaries and let your love and your thankfulness for other people be shown to them. We are able to see love around us in how God treats his family. 
not just somebody else. God says, you are a member of my family and I want to love you. I want to do things for you that nobody else can do. And he does it. The greatest gift that God sent, we have already said. It is Jesus Christ, his son. That is the greatest of God's gifts. And in Jesus, God assures us of his love, his forgiveness, every day and every way. God takes us deeper into his word so that we may hear of what he did for the Israelites and how his blessings to them is also to be a blessing to us so that we understand. In the book of Deuteronomy in the 8th chapter, which was our Old Testament lesson for today, God speaks. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to your fathers. Every day the commandments of God come to us. It's not only the Ten Commandments. It's much more than that. It's about your way of life. The way in which you live in God's world. Those are the things God uses to inform us about how rich our love is going to be if we follow him. And God says, this will all happen if you are careful to do what he commands. Because then our relationship with God is not compromised. It doesn't go this way and that way and that way. It goes towards our Heavenly Father. And we give Him thanks. So many blessings that God offers, they are freely given to the believers. God doesn't charge you for what He gives to you. He doesn't send you a bill or an email or something and say, this is what I did for you, and this is what you owe to me. Because you don't do that with people that you love. People that you want to do something for. People that you can serve. But God says, think of some of the other things. About forgiveness. and the promises of care that you can give and that God gives to you. Think about what happened here earlier in this service with Elizabeth, where God said to her, I want you to be my child. And through the word-empowered waters of holy baptism, God made her one of his own. He knows her. He put his mark upon her. She says she is precious and should be loved, which she is. But God doesn't want to stop there. He wants us to know other things. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. As we remember about our past, and about all the blessings that God has given to us in our life, whether it's as a child or as an adult or a senior citizen, look back in your life and see the hand of God touching your life. 
It's an amazing experience. When you can think back and say, that was a pretty tough time, but you know what? It wasn't that bad with God at my side, for he was carrying me. The testing that we think that sometimes we receive in our life, you have that because that's the way that God strengthens your heart. Your resolve to look and receive from him what he has said is available. God's teaching does not does come to us every way. Some of the things we don't expect. I can look back at my life and think of all the ways that I didn't expect something was going to happen. But it did. And those surprises, those are ways that really open up our mind what God is available to do. In verse 3, God continues, And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Total reliance. Relying on God for every single thing in your life. And that comes by being close to God. By talking to Him. By listening and hearing what God says. And being a devoted follower of God's Word. For God will tell us the way, and he shares with us how to live our life. The blessings in life do not come from us. They come to us every day from God. He makes everything. He gives us all that we need and even more. And he implants that knowledge in your heart. He lets you know And in verses 5 and 6, what does God say? Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. There are a few words in there which, unless you understand what they mean, They could seem very harsh. God talks about discipline. God does not say, I am going to punish. I am going to hurt. I am going to just do all sorts of mean things to you so that you will know that I am the Lord. The leading of God is for us. When God disciplines us, it's his way of showing love. You do that for your own children. Why would you not listen to the Lord and receive from him his discipline? As we follow every day his direction and we show true fear. Part of it could be being afraid of God. Being afraid of God because of the things that God can do. But I believe there's another aspect of that. The word fear can also mean respect. We respect God. The same way we respect our parents. The same way we respect husbands and wives and children. The love that is shared. And continually in his word, God shares with us every way that he blesses our lives. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, 
a land of brooks of waters, of fountains and springs, of flowing out into the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey. You receive them from the hand of God, all of these blessings. Martin Luther looked at what God says in the first article of the Apostles' Creed, when it talks about God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Well, what does that mean? Martin Luther wrote a meaning to the first article. I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. If there's anything that God misses about what he talks about in here, he doesn't forget about it. He constantly reminds us of what he is doing for us. And if we think, well, what sorts of things are those? God speaks in his word, Deuteronomy 8, verse 9. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. Those words, without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. It doesn't say that well, sometimes maybe God's going to hold things back. He doesn't. Everything is available to you from the hand of God. Every day, every way, God continues to look at your life and supply your needs. And as we partake of all of those gifts from God so that we can eat and are full, never forget who supplies them. You shall eat and be full and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. For all the ways in which God touches your lives, for the blessings you receive from him, give thanks to God for his blessings to you every way and every day. Amen. We rise for prayer. Dear God, Heavenly Father, continue to watch over your children, both young and old. Continue to remind them of the blessings that are available to them, which they may receive from your hand and help us to be thankful for all things. In Jesus' name, amen.